Today, I wanna to talk about how to start a SaaS business with no money. And if you stick around till the end, I'm actually gonna talk about my not so top secret tip for how to do this in a repeatable fashion that doesn't require a bunch of luck to get it done. I'm Rob Walling, I'm a startup founder with multiple exits, the author of three books all about building startups and an investor in almost 80 companies. First, let's talk about building SaaS and what actually costs the money. You know, why would you need money to do it? First thing I'll say is that building software, just writing the code is actually gonna be the easy part. It's potentially expensive if you're not a developer, but that part is not complicated. The complicated part, the part that most people fail on, and whether they're developers or founders or non-technical founders, is finding customers. Finding customers is by far the most difficult piece of it. And usually that's cheaper than building the software itself because usually as a founder, you're doing that. You're doing the sales and you're doing the marketing and you're signing customers up. I wanna say that if you don't have customers, you do not have a business, you have a hobby. There's a lot of people that play business. They get business cards and they get a bank account and they form an LLC if you're in the US or whatever entity type is in your country and they play business. They act like they're in business but until someone pays you a dollar, you don't have a business. All right, so let's talk now about how to build a SaaS company with no money. What do you need money for at all to build, you know, to build a SaaS company? There's usually no government filings to start a, a company because you start with a sole proprietorship in the U.S. or whatever the equivalent is uh, in your country. And you'll have to check local laws to figure out if you need to do some type of license if you start a business out of your home. I'm not going to give you advice on that. This video obviously is not legal advice. But I've started many companies, and when they're a nascent idea without customers, I don't run off and form a company entity because it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money until someone starts paying you, until you have revenue, until you have customers. I have always not gone down that road and then I form the company later once I have a real business. A Stripe account that allows you to charge your customers is free. So there's, there's a lot of things now out there, the education, like this video channel, other videos on YouTube that are free or very cheap. If you're enjoying my videos, I'd love it if you'd click the like button below and subscribe to the channel. We have a ton of content coming out on this channel. We have more than 200 videos now and new content coming out pretty much every week, varying from live streams to our talks at in-person events to educational videos like this. So what isn't free or cheap? Well, one is building the software. If you're a developer, then you can build it essentially for free, right? Nights and weekends. You might have minimal, minimal hosting costs, but usually you can build locally and then you can find a, a, a cheap you know, infrastructure as a service play like Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud or Heroku that are really, really cheap uh, to work with. So if you're a developer, be prepared for nights and weekends. That's what most of us did to get our companies going. If you're not a developer, you have a few options. One is to find a developer co-founder, a technical co-founder as they're often referred to. But here's the thing. They are bringing all this knowledge and skill and experience and their nights and weekends and you know the, the ability to code. You have to bring an equivalent amount of, of stuff, of skills and hard work to the table because showing up with an idea and thinking that that's equivalent to someone's five, 10, 15 years experience writing code as well as hundreds of hours of nights and weekends they're about to spend on it is ludicrous. So you have to bring something to the table beyond just the idea. You should be talking to potential customers, fleshing out the idea. You should be booking pre-orders. You can create wireframes or mock-ups of the software. You can create a landing page and drive traffic to that. You can create content. You can start the marketing flywheel. You can build an email interest list. There is so much you can be doing if you're the non-technical founder and you do find a technical founder. It is quite difficult to start a SaaS company if you're not a developer. It's possible, but due to the uh, the complexity of it and the you know upfront expense, um, it's something that you're really going to have to think through as to whether or not you want to tackle. And again, I have my not so top secret tip at the end of this video where I talk through ways to get around that um, and to kind of build up, build a flywheel, and to you know stair step your way up into building a SaaS company. One thing I will say is I've heard some folks recommend that if you don't have money, you can go pre-sell a solution to a group of people, you get them to pay you money, and then you use that to hire cheap, usually overseas offshore labor to build your software product. I don't like that idea. I don't like it at all, actually. I think that pre-selling something that doesn't exist and then taking a really risky bet of something you've probably never done 
You've probably never built or launched or marketed one of these before. And now you're going to essentially take cash in hand. So you're kind of in debt if you th think about it. Um, you know, it's not as if you've taken investment. You've actually taken uh, upfront revenue with the promise of building the software. I, I don't like that idea. Your mileage may vary. I think some people can make it work. I think it's a really risky uh, way to do it. And I think the odds of it backfiring are pretty high. And the odds of you getting really crappy software from, from someone that you haven't worked with, whose eight hour time difference than you, I think is, is, is a real challenge. Another way that you can start a SaaS company, you could at least build the MVP, is to use no code. No code is a term for a whole collection of apps, an ecosystem of apps that you can string together. So I'll give you, just give you examples of them. So Zapier is an automation engine. Even like Google Sheets is often used in no code. There's Bubble, there's Airtable, there's Notion. Even like Squarespace is sometimes called no code because you can build websites there. And you can string things together and make an interesting business. I, I wouldn't technically call it SaaS. It's more, to me, I'd think of it as productized service or an MVP, a minimum viable product of SaaS. But that is a way to get started. You don't always have to build software in order to you know, serve someone's needs. And if you go in and, and sell um, you, you know, your idea to them of I'm going to give you new SEO keywords each week or I'm going to give you new leads each week, ultimately you may want to build software to do that. But in the short term, you may be able to do that somewhat manually through human automation, whether that's your own time or whether you're, you know, hire a virtual assistant or hire a contractor to get that person leads, right? So that you don't always need software to, to do this. So those is, that, that's another option if you're a non-technical founder. So I talked about how development is expensive. It's usually the most expensive piece if you're not a developer. Then there's marketing, right? How expensive is marketing? Well, if you don't have any money, you're not going to be able to do pay-per-click advertising or really any type of advertising. So you're going to have to rely on more proven, uh, f f I'll say free. These are free approaches that are only free because they take your time. And you're going to have to probably learn one of these because you don't have money to hire someone. So I'd be looking at approaches like search engine optimization, content marketing, partnerships, direct outreach, and even attending in-person events. I know that in-person events are not free technically, but if you, especially if you're focused on a, on a small niche, like on a vertical, um, meaning you pick, oh, I'm only going to go after uh, gyms, or I'm going to go at, you know, like boxing gyms, or I'm going to go after hairdressers, or I'm going to go after, um, you know, lawyers, those people usually gather at industry events and going there, even as an attendee and having a lot of conversations can be it's not a free way, but it can be an inexpensive way of, of engaging with your audience and, and frankly, making sales. So what else? What else costs money in a SaaS app? There's sales, there's support. You're going to do those things. You just have, you have to buck up. You need to do it nights and weekends until you have enough money to, to quit the day job. Most people I know who start SaaS companies or really start any type of software startup, they do almost everything themselves or they fund it from their day job. And so they are working nights and weekends. That's the usual path. I'm not saying you have to do that, but that is the most common path I see. There are some folks who have that confluence of events where they've saved up a year's worth of, of salary, right, or living expenses, or they have a spouse or partner who's willing to support them while they do it. There, these are options, but realistically, most people I know, they do start nights and weekends until they get a business because you don't know if building that business is going to take three months, six months, or a year or longer. And so having a finite amount of cash that you're pulling from can, can be stressful. Succeeding with a startup takes three things, hard work, luck, and skill. And those things can be in varying degrees. If you have a lot of luck, then you might need less hard work and skill to get it done. But I hate relying on luck, right? I want to have a repeatable process that I'm pretty sure is going to work every time. And so if you stick around for just another 30 seconds, we're going to dive into my not so top secret approach for doing this in a repeatable fashion that requires much less luck than the above. If you like this video, click the like button below. That'd be awesome. Leave a comment, ask me a question and subscribe to this channel. We have a ton more content like this coming out every week. All right, so let's dive in to this not so top secret approach. I say it's not so top secret because it's it's a framework called the stair step approach. And the reason that it's, you know, not as secret as it might be is I blogged about it. And so we will link that up in the show note descriptions below. But the idea of stair stepping is that you start with something small. You don't do SaaS from the start because SaaS is expensive and it's complicated, especially if you haven't done it. So you start with something small that maybe software 
doesn't have to be software. Maybe you write an ebook. Maybe you build a course on something you know about and you put it online and sell it. Maybe you uh, consult. Maybe you have a productized service, but you build that product to a nice revenue stream. You repeat that until you can quit your day job and then you use that money or that time to invest in your SaaS. And you, you basically self-fund. You angel invest in yourself. This is the path that I traveled. This is a path that many founders, especially SaaS founders, I know have stair-stepped their way up through consulting to productized consulting to maybe a WordPress plugin to SaaS or from eBooks to courses to teaching to SaaS. If you want to learn software, consider, you know, maybe you do eBooks and courses, but if you really want to get into software, then consider something simpler like a WordPress plugin, a Heroku add-on or a Shopify app or something else in an app ecosystem because those apps tend to be simpler to deploy and manage and market than SaaS. They're not going to get as big usually. It's rare you're going to build a seven-figure add-on in a Heroku marketplace versus SaaS can obviously be seven, eight, nine figures. But it's a great way to start small and to ease into it and to stair-step your way up so that you gain the experience, you gain revenue, you gain profit that you can invest, you gain confidence, and you gain skills, right? The marketing skill, the support skill, the sales skills that you need to build and be successful at running a SaaS company. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed my little conversation about starting a SaaS business with no money. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.